but we're now heeding that some of those are taking off. That's all for now. I'll be back with another bulletin at 8.25. I'll see you then. Bye-bye. Hello, this is Breakfast with John Kay and Sally Nugent. Now just after... Go on. It's just after half past seven, Sal. Sorry. <laughs> That's fine. Don't be loud. <laughs> it is just after half past seven. Uh, now, we're talking about the NHS this morning, aren't we? And the uh, incredible pressure that it's under at the moment. It's about to get worse as nurses go on strike tomorrow. Ambulance workers also set to walk out later this month. Let's speak to Professor Sir Stephen Powers. He's the National Medical Director for NHS England and we're hoping he'll be able to give us some information and some tips for how we're all going to cope over the next few days. Good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we'll go through some specific scenarios over the next few minutes, but maybe just give us a broad message to start with, would you? For people who I know a lot of our viewers are worried about services and how the NHS is going to cope, what's your broad message to them? Well, uh, industrial action begins tomorrow with nurses. Uh, it's important to say it's not affecting uh, all hospitals in England. In fact, the vast majority of them will still be uh, working normally, as indeed will primary care. So that's general practice, dentistry and pharmacy. And remember, the emergency services are still working too. So if you need uh, assistance for a life-threatening condition, then uh, do uh, still call 999 and for other non-life-threatening conditions 111 online should be the first uh, port of call. We've asked hospitals uh, that are being affected to contact patients in advance if their care is going to be disrupted. So the message there is if you haven't heard uh, that your care, your procedure, your uh, patient appointment is being rescheduled, then please do turn up uh, on the day. But I have to be clear, John, uh, there will be disruption uh, in uh, some of our hospitals tomorrow. Okay, so... so that's the broad message. If, for example, somebody was to fall on the ice uh, tomorrow, what should they do? They, they, they might not think it's life threatening. They might worry about whether they can or should phone 999. If, they, if they're hurt, they're injured or a loved one is, well, what should they do? They should do what they normally do. Ambulance services are not uh, affected tomorrow, uh, so continue to call uh, 999 for those life-threatening conditions uh, uh, and, and seek other advice as you, you usually would from general practice, uh, from pharmacies, uh, from 111 online, uh, as, as I say, as a first port of call, uh, but also there's an uh, opportunity to call uh, 111 as well uh, if that is necessary. So those services are in place uh, and the public should continue to use them. Uh, we've seen a letter this morning from the NHS England's National Cancer Director urging the Royal College of Nursing, who are going on strike, to protect critical care, uh, specifically talking about chemotherapy, protecting them from strike action. How concerned are you that people who are going to need chemo, going to need critical care, might not get the care they need tomorrow? Well, we all want to uh, keep patients safe uh, during the action uh, and we want to ensure, of course, that we continue to provide the very best services we can under the circumstances. Uh, we've been talking to representatives from the Royal College of Nursing now for uh, a number of weeks and uh, the letter that you're referring to is part of that ongoing dialogue uh, so that we can agree together uh, those key services that need to continue. So, so that, for instance, tomorrow includes uh, kidney dialysis, it includes chemotherapy services, uh, and, and uh, there are, uh, further progress, I think, has been made uh, following that letter. Of course, the RCN uh, will uh, likely confirm that. But, but that dialogue will continue at the national level today. Uh, and just as importantly, local hospitals are talking to local union representatives uh, around very specific services, uh, and sometimes even on a patient-by-patient -patient basis, because we do want to keep services safe, and we do uh, want to ensure that the very urgent uh, cases continue. A lot of what you're saying is is reassuring, but still there are headlines on the front page of the Times this morning saying that uh, nurses leaders are telling some of the union chiefs that lives are going to be at risk. What are we to make of, of headlines like that? Are lives at risk? Well, that's exactly why we've been having these combination of conversations with uh, colleagues at, the, at RCN to ensure uh, that we keep patients safe, that we uh, continue with those emergency uh, and key services. Uh, but there will be disruption, undoubtedly, at those hospitals affected. Uh, some care will have to be uh, rescheduled. Uh, so, although, as I say, if you haven't heard uh, that uh, your care is going to be rescheduled, do turn up. Uh, unfortunately, for some people, uh, there will be disruption. Disruption, but but you think lives should not be at risk? Well, the Royal College of Nursing uh, 
and I say I was obviously want to do everything to ensure uh, that we keep patients safe. Uh, that's uh, important for all NHS staff. NHS staff come to work in the morning to to care for people, to save lives. They're deeply committed, uh, and that we do keep patients safe, uh, and we do avoid uh, the possibility of harm. Because next week we've got ambulance driver strikes as well, haven't we? What what sort of uh, contingency measures are being put into place to make sure that people can get care on the spot if they have a fall on the ice or, or need an emergency? Similar conversations are occurring uh, with the unions around uh, ambulance services, so that would include ensuring that the very sickest of patients uh, are uh, attended to through uh, the uh, ambulance response on 999 calls. Uh, but it is again likely that there'll be some disruption. So if it's a non life threatening condition and you do need an ambulance to convey you to hospital, my expectation is that might take a bit longer. Uh, we are asking uh, the military for assistance. Uh, they will be providing uh, some support at local hospitals. Uh, they can't do blue lights, but they can do other uh, driving. Uh, um, uh, in, in other circumstances, uh, and uh, we we are giving our local trust some discretions to use other uh, forms of transport as well. So so once again, discussions are going on, and plans are being made in the background uh, to ensure uh, that we minimise disruption. Other forms of transport. I, I've seen suggestions that uh, some trusts will be block booking taxis. Is that going to be happening for some patients? Uh, that's a possibility. So that is one of a range of options that we are uh, talking to local uh, hospitals around uh, about. But uh, we very much want them to take into account local circumstances. Uh, as I say, the military are also uh, likely to give some assistance. And the police as well, uh, a suggestion that, that, that weren't going to be enough military vehicles, only just a handful of military vehicles involved, and that maybe police vehicles would be brought in. Uh, at the moment, our conversations are very much with the military. The military have given us uh, support in the past. They gave us a huge amount of assistance, for instance, during the pandemic uh, on the vaccine programme and uh, PPE, for instance. So we're well used to working uh, with the military. So that will be our, our, our main focus. How many military, though? Because I saw a suggestion that um, there are only about 40 military personnel going to be used. That doesn't sound an awful lot. Well, I think it will be in the hundreds. Um, uh, but um, again, I should be clear that uh, they, this, uh, the use of the military will not uh, be able to prevent the disruption completely. Uh, they will be an important part uh, of the response of, uh, of ensuring that that disruption is minimised. Uh, but uh, they will not be able to uh, prevent all of it. So again, they're one of a range of things that we're, we're looking at um, with the aim of trying to minimise disruption. But again, let me be clear. Uh, if the ambulance uh, action goes ahead next week, uh, it, it will again cause some disruption. Thinking about all the things we've just talked about, the emergency reaction, the chemotherapy, the appointments, the drivers, all of that you're trying to juggle. I know you don't want to get involved in the politics, but as someone who's trying to navigate a way through all this, what is your message to both sides in this dispute as we look at potentially a very long industrial action? Well, Pay is a matter uh, for the independent pay review bodies and then for the government, uh, as you rightly say. Uh, I, like anybody else, and we in the NHS, would like these disputes to be um, solved and resolved uh, as quickly as possible. But uh, clearly that's a matter for the unions, a matter for the ministers. Uh, our job uh, is to ensure that we support our staff, uh, whether they have ticked the box for action or they haven't. Uh, and also do what we can, uh, working closely with our union colleagues to ensure that we uh, minimise disruption. Frustrating for you, though? Well, I think frustrating for patients, uh, frustrating uh, for staff as well, for all sorts of reasons. Uh, but we absolutely understand the right of our staff to take action uh, if they wish to and if they, uh, if they vote for this. Uh, our job, as I say, is to support them. Uh, and to uh, do what we can. Uh, we're working incredibly hard, as I've said, to uh, minimise disruption for patients. Professor Sir Stephen Powers, National Medical Director of NHS England. Thank you for uh, explaining that to us on breakfast this morning. Thank you, John. We now know, don't we, one of the teams heading into the World Cup final this weekend. Are we heading for an Mbappe-Messi final? <laughs>